Hi and welcome to Mark's Motivational Podcast, another Authors Tuesday. Today I'm delighted to be joined by another great author, Ken Moyers, who was previously a school teacher and he's working on children's books at the moment. Um, so it's been great to welcome you along to the uh, show tonight, Ken. Thanks a lot for joining me. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, thank you so much. So we'll probably just start off the podcast, if you wouldn't mind telling the listeners a little bit about yourself and um, a bit about your writing as well. It'll be a great place to start. Thanks so much. Yeah. Uh, let me just start out by saying writing and reading were never my favorites growing up in school and college and high school. I didn't care for it at all. And when I started teaching, I taught at the elementary level. And one of the things we used to be able to do back in the old days was actually after lunch, the kids would come back and we'd relax and I would read to them. And so several stories and books we would read. My, as I was preparing for today, I was thinking probably my favorite book to read to the kids was the original Bambi by Felix Salton, not the Disney version. They, no. It's an amazing book. And so we would read a chapter a day, and I just enjoyed that opportunity just to read to kids. So as I went on in my career in education, I was I went and got a, a degree and certified to become an administrator, got appointed to a principalship, and I started getting some training in management and things like that. And so I started thinking about how to be a manager, how to be a leader. And I started writing articles about the principalship, how to be a good principal, a good communicator, a disciplinarian, and so on, and got some of those published in some of the uh, education magazines. That was back in the 80s. And a, a friend of mine, uh, we met actually uh, through writing with George Paulus. So he and I teamed up and we started writing together again, about the principalship and leadership. The uh, professional fraternity, education fraternity called Phi Delta Kappa uh, picked up some of our work and we wrote some monographs for them as well. And so kind of my, my career in writing really was in leadership and management and so on. The first thing I, I wrote really for a children's magazine was Jack and Jill magazine. I don't know if you remember that little magazine, yeah. but there was an advertisement to the readers. If you have an interesting article, send us your article. Well, at that time, I was principal of a school that was earth sheltered. They built the school and then covered it with earth in order to save energy. And I thought that would be interesting. So I wrote a little article and sent some pictures to them, and sure enough, they got published in Jack and Jill magazine. I think I got paid a huge uh, sum of $60, I think is what I remember getting paid. <laughs> yeah. So that was my introduction to children's writing, and I really enjoyed that. The next thing that came was I saw an, an, one of those advertisements that says, you too can be a writer. Send in your your piece and we'll evaluate it and see if you can be a writer. So I sent in a piece. Of course, they knew I could be a writer. And I signed up with them and I was lucky enough to get Mary Ryan, a children's author, as the mentor to me as I wrote. So I wrote my first children's, I would call an adolescent chapter book called Journey of the Spirit. I I really like the book. I wish I could get it published, but the setting is pre-Civil War. And that is, on the, nobody wants to talk about that anymore. And it really is a great story about some children who are thrown together, some escaped slaves and a, a young white um, Southerner who gets, anyway, the, the story is just an excellent story, great character. So I submitted it. And uh, they turned it down for a number of reasons, mostly because of the setting was the Civil War era. But I got lots of positive comments about the characters and the plot and the introduction and so on. So that really did whet my appetite and to continue writing. Yeah. That all emerged into doing some other writing. I became interested in the style of Dr. Seuss. 
And mm -hmm. so I've started working and trying to mimic his style a little bit. And I've produced a couple books of uh, using his style. But I also was interested, continued to be interested in leadership. And I've produced some things there. Uh, one book particularly that's on Amazon. And uh, I also was very interested in spiritual things. And so I took ordinary observations and made spiritual applications. And I put together a book uh, as well uh, called um, uh, Wait One Christian Minute. And it's just a series of articles and things that I thought about and tried to make an application that are meaningful people when they read. So that's been kind of my journey in writing. I currently have a number of books on my computer that I'm writing or rewriting. The one about the pre-Civil War era book, I'm currently editing, and I may publish it myself. I just think it's a good, yeah. a good book. Mm -hmm. So Definitely. that's kind of where I am in writing right now and how I got to it. Yeah, that, that's, that's great. That, thanks a lot for sharing that, Cam. And I, you were a teacher for many years as well. Um, did you get, were you influenced much being a teacher? Um, I know you loved reading the stories to the, to the school kids, but um, would you say it influenced you in a lot of your writing from being a teacher of a school? You know, what really interested me, Mark, as a teacher and a, uh, an educator, a principal of a school, was trying to see the world from their perspective. You know, children haven't figured it all out yet. So when they see something and they process it, they don't have all the information. So it's very interesting how they come up with their conclusions yeah. and how they put things together. I remember, for example, one instance, I was sitting with two brothers, school was over and their mom was always late picking them up. So I just sit and we'd wait together for mom to pick them up. And one day, the older of the two brothers, and I think he was second grade, and the younger was kindergarten. The older of the two said to me, you know, my dad's in jail. I said, I'm really sorry to hear that. What Can you tell me what happened? And so he went on with the store. I guess there was a fight at home. And uh, the police were called. And so he got taken away. And he, he said, yeah, my mom says he... He's going to be in jail for a long time. And so I'm sorry to hear that. Why, why is he going to be in for a long time? Well, my mom says we have to come up with $200 to get him out of jail. And then he, and this is what caught me. He says, and you know, nobody has $200. And so that was his perspective of the world at that point. Yeah. Probably conversation with his mom um, put him to the, that conclusion, but children have such an interesting perspective. And so in terms of my writing, yeah, absolutely. In order to write for children, I think I got an advantage by me able to see how children see things and process information. Yeah. Um, the shame of it is as they as we all got older, you know, we lost that ability to see things in a very different way. And so yeah, absolutely. It it influenced my writing and the way I took on some of the things that I wrote. Yeah, uh, that's that's great, uh, Ken. Because you know, is there any particular story that you've written or a book you've written, um, that majorly influenced you as, as being a teacher? Like, is there one or two that you could maybe think of that you'd like to share, um, with the listeners? There is one that I haven't published yet, and I love this story as well. And it's another children's uh, picture book is what it would be. And the plot is a, a boy comes across the penny while he's walking his dog and he's determined it's a lucky penny. Right. He picks it up, he takes it home, and he's got this lucky penny. But then he, as he thinks about it, he has to dis there has to be a test in order to know if it truly is lucky. So he devises a test. There's a he determines that the, the next week there's going to be a test in the classroom. And so he decides, I'm not going to study for the test. I have this lucky penny. I'm going to play instead of study. And he shows up. The, well, the day of the, the test, everything starts going wrong. There's no luck in, in the day whatsoever. He gets to the test, and he's finally ready to take the test. And he reaches in his pocket, 
and there's a hole in his pocket and his lucky penny is gone. And so I try to come up with a moral of the story. If you've got work to do, prepare yourself to do the work rather than count on luck or the circumstances. So those are the kinds of things. That's how a child would look at things, I think, is I got this lucky penny. Yeah. Now I got to prove that it is a lucky penny indeed. And it turned out it was not a, it wasn't a lucky penny at all. So yeah, things like that uh, gave me in, inspiration, I guess, and the, how to see things the way a child might see things. So yeah. that's just one example. Another, a book that I did uh, have published is Tell Me a Story. And in this book, there's two uh, young characters. They just finished their bath. They ought to, and the pictures really show the story. Uh, the pictures were done by Becca Grace. She lives in uh, England. And we worked together, and she did a marvelous job. But it looks like a blended family. So we got that into the, the story. That's an, a visual uh, cue. But these two kids, are they have their bath. They're ready for a story. And so they go to Grandpa, and Grandpa, they say, well, tell us a story. But he never gets to tell them a story because they keep coming up with ideas of what a fun <laughs> story might be. These crazy ideas that yeah, they have. Yeah. They want to, with dragons and uh, the wars and battles and battleships and and uh, princes and, um, and a mouse that just is uh, uh, unbelievably strong. And so they are the really ones telling these interesting stories yeah. rather than grandpa. So yeah. I like that book. It's a fun book for kids to read. Sounds sounds great. Sounds great because I, I love you to share them, show them. <clears throat> Excuse me to people because we'll be looking on YouTube as well a little bit later on if if you don't mind. <clears throat> yeah, that, that's great. Yeah, can I, <clears throat> excuse me. Can I just ask you as well? Um, what do you find your best strategy that works for you when you're writing for people that listen yeah. that are listening that might be able to help people that are listening who are are first time writers? If you wouldn't mind, can would be great. Yeah, that's a good question. Certainly, it focuses on inspiration and being able to find those things that are really all around us that inspire something up there that says there's a story there somewhere. The first children's book that I got that I published, uh, self published, was uh, Theo the Mouse, a Christmas story. And the reason, the inspiration for that was the old uh, children's. Um, poem called uh, A Christmas Story. It was the night before Christmas when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. Well, I started thinking about that mouse. Now, mice are always up at night. They're never asleep at night. They're stirring. So that was the inspiration for that one is, now what would that mouse be doing if he's awake? Well, maybe he comes from, he has a poor family and he's and his kids don't have any presents for Christmas, and he's going to go through the house and find something for the kids. So that's the plot for Theo the Mouse, a Christmas story. But that's that idea of inspiration, finding something that really gets you going. As far as the process, I will say this in terms of, at least for me, all of the, the uh, Theo the Mouse was a Dr. Seuss style poem, poetry as well as tell me a story. I really like that style and I'm sort of stuck in it for now because I really have learned it, I think, learned it well. But what I did learn in the process of writing it is in rhyming and meter, it's really complicated. And it, it's like a really uh, complicated puzzle of 2,000 pieces that you're trying to put together because you the wording has to be just right, and the plot has to be there, and the meter has to be so specific. That was my learning experience, was Theo the Mouse. And I would, and that was the inspiration for it. But I could sit here at my computer, quite honestly, as I'm writing, and just stare at a stanza on my screen, trying to find the right word, the right meter, and if I couldn't find the perfect writing word, I'd have to rewrite the 
I literally, I would sit here for hours looking at a stanza and trying to make it right. So one of the things I would say to writers is if you want to write, it's not physically hard, but it's mentally, emotionally challenging. It takes that type of work, maybe as, tired, as, as tiring as physical work, but you have to want to get it right. You, you don't want to give something to children that's not right, that doesn't really rhyme. It almost rhymes. Well, no, that's not acceptable. It has to rhyme. It has to, it has to have that, that cadence to it when you read it and so on. So that's kind of where I am right now is, is with the children's books and the Dr. Seuss style. Uh, I would add this to it. Uh, may not fit with the question you just asked, but one of the things I learned was to submit my work to an editor who understood rhyming and meter. That was the most valuable experience I had. I thought I was the best writer. I really knew what I was doing. I submitted it to an editor and found out I was not the best writer and that I didn't have it, everything down perfectly yet, which was very valuable for me, very valuable. That feedback that you get from other people is extremely important and being able to modify your work and make it so it really is really sharp writing and good good writing. And that's what you want for kids. If you're going to write for kids, it's got to be good. It's got to be sharp. It's got to be interesting. So I don't know if I answered that question. No, you really did. Um, like like, like you say, that there's no thing as failure, only feedback. So like, it's great to get feedback off people, you know? You know that you oh, can, it is. Yeah, definitely. And friends can give good feedback yeah. too. I have yeah, a definitely. friend uh, that I show some of my work too and he's he's a retired colonel army officer and and uh, he gives me great feedback so yeah anybody can give you feedback but in terms of the tech the technical pieces of it you need somebody who understands it yeah definitely you know that, that's great and um, can i just ask you as well like if you could kind of give um the listeners from you've been a writer for many years um it's great advice you just gave like for your strategy it's really good but like if you were going to pinpoint maybe one or two or three points that have stood well to you um, over the last years as, as you've written your great books, what would you say to them, um, Cam? Yeah, that's another good question. The first thing I would say is start writing. Just start writing. Just write. I would, I take a walk every morning, early in the morning, and sometimes it's dark. Uh, it's still night. And uh, the other day I was walking down on our downtown. It's about a mile and a half, two miles away. And I came across a lady who was sitting by herself at a table outside a coffee cafe. Nobody else was around. The cafe wasn't open. She was just sitting there. And so I asked her how she was. And so on. She said, well, I really want to write a story. Now, I didn't say I didn't indicate to her that I was writing and knew something about writing. And so we talked for a little while. And as we talked, I looked at what she had in front of her, their paper. There wasn't a single word on it. She hadn't started writing. And that's so the first thing I would say is just write, just write. Doesn't have to be good. Doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't have to have a plot. It just Write something. Just get it down on paper. You can edit it later. You can show it to friends later. You can throw it all away later. You can do whatever you want. So that's number one. And number two, I would say stick with it. Don't give up when you've... I'm writing another uh, story right now in, in children's, a, uh, an adolescent chapter book called The, uh, the Unwishing Well. Instead of the wishing well, this is the unwishing well. And this is a very spoiled little girl yeah. Yeah. In, in this story. And she wants to wish away. She has an opportunity to wish away everybody and everything that bothers her, which is really the world. She just wants to wish everybody away. Well, and she finds out that's that doesn't work. That's not good. She, you know, she's wishing away her family, her friend. So she wants them all back again. She decided she learned her lesson. Well, she has to go to the unwishing well, and the old crone who governs that old wishing well has a very steep price. 
if she wants to get everything back again, much deeper than wishing people away. And so I, I'm at a block in this story. I'm stopped. I don't know where to go next. So I'll pull that book up every once in a while or that, that manuscript and, and try to get in the head of that little girl. What should happen to her next? What does she want to do? How, how, what is the price for her foolishness? Yeah. So that's where I am in that book. And obviously it's not done yet. So start writing, keep writing, keep editing, keep looking for things around you as possible story opportunities would be another thing that I would suggest. They're, they're everywhere, Mark. Every, every day in your life is an opportunity for somebody to influence you in a way that will that is an interesting story. I'll tell you one other thing that I do. I love movies. And what I find myself doing is criticizing the plot and the characters and the with a writer's mind. It's well, I wouldn't I wouldn't have written it that way. Uh, uh, that's a terrible character. Uh, yeah. Why would it? So as a writer, <laughs> I keep keep uh, being probably overcritical. But see, that's good, too, because my mind is always putting the yeah. technical pieces together, mm. and that helps me in my writing as well. So, And I would add to that, reading other people's stories and books and so on, obviously, is going to be helpful, as long as you don't copy their work, of course, but <laughs> yeah. or their ideas. <laughs> yeah. So those would be some zest suggestions I would su offer as uh, ways to get started writing. Yeah, just just start writing. Just write something. That's really helpful, Ken. Thanks so much for that because I know exactly what you mean because I'll be watching a TV show on on, a, on, a, on Netflix or something like that and I'll be like, well, I understand how they're after doing that. Like, I know why because you're, you're, you're used to the, the process, aren't you? It used to the process <laughs> and you yeah. can see them, at least I think I can see yeah. the mistakes yeah. that they've made and I would have been such a much better writer if they'd have asked yeah. me. I could have done better. So, yeah, isn't that right. foolish? But no it's great that, thanks a lot for sharing that's brilliant because um you know that, that's great can I just ask you um I hope this question is okay but uh, it's probably might be different enough to answer but to you what was your your most success so far as a writer um if you were to pinpoint something that sticks out in your mind that you're really happy about that worked out for your with your books or in your writing um so far if you don't mind me asking that Ken yeah, that's that's also a good question, and I think uh, my answer is going to be kind of strange. But what I have enjoyed most about writing, quite honestly, and I share this when I go to schools and talk about writing and talk to kids about writing and share my books and so on. The most fascinating and interesting thing to me in the process of writing is the characters will talk to me as I'm writing. Obviously it's not, but in my mind, for example, the journey of the spirit, the pre-civil war, I wanted to go in one direction and the characters said, no, oh, that's not what we would do. Here's what we would do. This is how we act. That, and so the, the I know this sounds kind of strange, and the kids will look at me when I tell them that, like, you're really crazy, aren't you? Crazy old man. But it's true. The characters take a life, and you become so, they become embedded, really, in your personality and your persona. And as you're writing, they, 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 in my writing, they have given me information and ideas uh, that I, I just... Uh, it's, and I know it's strange, but uh, it is. It is. I've heard it said many times by other writers that characters, uh, like the Christmas Carol, I saw a movie on the Christmas Carol and how those characters, you know, really came to life as he was trying to write that story, and it was really hammered him as as he was writing it and trying to get it finished. So. I don't know. Does that answer that question, Mark? That's... No, it does definitely. Like I know, it really does because. I, I, I understand exactly what you're saying because when I'm writing my, my books, they, they do take a life of their own like completely. But is there any particular book that you've you've written that you're, you're most, I know you're, you're happy with all your work, but um, is there one 
one particular story or book that you're you'd like to share that you you're, you're, that's that, that's close to your heart, as as they say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I really think my very first published children's book, Theo the Mouse, a Christmas story. Uh, I think yeah. I don't know if we can see it. Uh, anyway, it's a bit blurry. Yeah, I can't see it. Don't. But that really was, I think it's important to me because I finally did what I wanted to do. I'd written other things, but this one was just special to me. Yeah. It, had a, it has a great story, a great plot about the importance of family, more so than presents and all the trappings of Christmas and and a father who loves his kids and he wants something special for them and he can't provide them. So he, he sacrifices um, in order to provide. So it's got lots of good elements in it that I think uh, go really well. And, I, and I'm really proud of that story. The original title was Toby the Mouse, A Christmas Story. And when we were all done, uh, Becca had finished the illustrations. We were ready to submit it. And her husband said to me, have you checked to see if there's any other titles like that, Toby the Mouse? And there happened to be one, Toby the Mouse, when I researched it. So I had to change the name, and I came up with Theo the Mouse. And his name should have been Theo to start with. It should never have been Toby. And so again, another illustration of how you know the book takes on real meaning for you. But I have taken this book to several schools, and I love reading it to the kids because of the the message about family is so important, rather than all the other stuff. Mm. So yeah, I would say that my first one. But like you said, I, I honestly enjoy all of my books, of course, yeah. and the ones I haven't published yet. I I just I just enjoy getting into them and uh, and writing so no congratulations sounds brilliant i'm going to share all your work on the show notes for people to check out um after the show as well so make sure you check all ken's work out uh, so that's great thanks a lot for sharing that's brilliant and can i ask you as well have you i think you said it earlier on but you you, you self-published most of your books have you or have yeah. you yeah yeah and how have I you have. found i'm oh, sorry have you found that I, process uh, yeah and then one thing about the process is if you're going to do it right, then you're going to pay for an editor to look at your work before you make a mistake by publishing something that isn't quality. You're going to pay for an illustrator if it's a children's book or even if it's a chapter book. Many of those have illustrations as well. And then you're going to pay for the, the publish, publication, physical publication of the book. So it's expensive to do it. And yet I've enjoyed doing it because I can take them with me to schools. I can sell them in the schools. I can sell them at local craft fairs or whatever and greet people and, and show them some of my work. So that certainly is, is part of the process that goes along with it. I, I do like self publishing The other way I've self-published is with um, Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing, KDP. Yeah. My book on... Um, um, see, uh, yeah, I, I, the book on management and leadership, CAPS 101, Basic Competencies, Attributes, and Practices of Leaders and Managers. It's a very short book, but I did it through Kindle Direct Publishing, and it worked out just fine, just really well, and it was easy to do the process. Uh, the other one uh, on the uh, spiritual um, essays, I did Kindle Direct Publishing as well. And that I, I like KDP. It works out pretty well. Yeah. They're a little bit fussy as, with some of the fine tuning of the actual scale of the yeah. book. And the, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it drives me nuts. But once you get it and they accept it, it's, it, you're good to go. And it really doesn't cost, it doesn't cost anything. It's published, it's print on demand. And uh, all you got to do is advertise it and hope some people will buy it. So, so I've done both of them, and I have submitted to publishers. I have not 
found anybody that likes my work enough to really take it on. So, yeah. no, 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 thanks very much. Yeah, because uh, I understand like uh, KDP is a great, great um, platform for 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 anybody that's self publishing. And is and as well as that, do you have any of your books in in libraries or small bookshops? Have you approached any of them, Ken? I have done that, and I've not found a lot of um, success doing that. In our little town, we have a little bookstore, and they they do author visits, okay. and so you know we can do that, and I can do that, and share my books at that point. And like I said, schools and mm -hmm. and various community gatherings where you can sell your books. Those have been the things that I've been able to do. But for example, taking a, a store, taking them on, or something like that, I, I just haven't been successful at it. Yeah. Um, I'm always open to it, but it just hasn't worked out. Yeah, and is there any other kind of avenues you, you could um recommend for people who are listening that you found really helpful? Like um, no, it's it's a great idea. The the craft fairs and the the book fairs are great, aren't they? But is there anything else that um I haven't asked you about that you'd like to share that you found helpful to you? Well, in terms of the marketing, yeah, I I think that's probably be my biggest weakness if there is one is trying to get it out there i use facebook a lot uh, i have my own uh, website khmyers.com where you can go and get my the three children's books you can order there and the other two of course are uh, published uh, kdp so you know that works out and i've sold quite a few books through my website so, and that has helped um, Facebook and advertising in that way. It is difficult though. It's, I have found it difficult and I see success for other people and I try and find from them, you know, what, what is your key? What really moved it for you? And it seems to be different for everybody. Yeah. There's always that spark that you hope will catch on and your book will find somebody in somebody's hands that really can help you move the book along. I almost had that with Theo the mouse. I was at a, a Christmas bazaar and a lady came up and bought the book. We talked. She was, uh, she produces shows, uh, uh, stage shows. Yeah. And so we talked about the possibility of, she was very interested and I kept up with her. We, we haven't been able to make a connection there, but I I am convinced, Mark, that this book would make a great children's play. Yeah. Uh, so you know, I've got that up here, and who knows whether that'll ever happen. But you know, as a writer, you've got to have you got to feel like yeah. something's good going to happen, and you just keep writing, you just keep going, and uh, looking for the opportunities out there. So yeah. No, you deserve like it because you your, your work sounds great. Your work sounds really good. Like um, I'm looking forward to sharing it all on the, on the on the show notes as well. Yeah, so that that's great, Ken. Thanks a lot for sharing. And what's next Thank for you. yourself as well, Ken? What what's what's um what what's coming up next? What have you any other ventures um on, on the horizon that you'd like to share for, with people that are listening and watching? In terms of writing, yeah. In terms of writing, yeah. Yeah, in terms of writing. Like I said, I still got several. Well, that may be over exaggeration, but I have, I do have a number of books that are not complete that need my editing. So I'll come in here in the computer, pull them up, and spend some time editing and working on it. And I, I'm just about convinced myself that I will self-publish Journey of the Spirit, the pre-Civil War one, because. Nobody's going to take it on because of our current culture, but I, it has such a good message to it, and I really want to get it out there if I can. So in terms of writing, that's where I'm headed. Is I've got a good supply to work on, and I just need to get to it and finish them up, rewrite them, edit them, and so on. Yeah, it sounds like you've got a goal with that book. Like it's, I wish you all the success going forward with it, with it, with all you do. And are you, are you have you any other um readings in bookshops coming up you'd like to mention or people that live in your area to let them know of you any anything you'd like to advertise there? Well, like I said, my my website is really where they can go most is khmyers.com and take a look at the books. There are, there's some opportunities there. 
or go to uh, Amazon and look up my name there, K.H. Myers, and then my two books on Amazon will be there, and hopefully another one at some point. But yeah, that's that's probably the best way to get in touch. And on the website, I will say this: on the website, there's an opportunity for uh, reviewers or people interested in my work to send me messages, and I always love getting messages from people, maybe from some of your audience that would like to communicate with me and back and forth and tell me how they're doing and their writing and so on. I, I was in that. Well, I, I'll be definitely keeping in touch with you as well to to, to share our good. ideas. <laughs> That's great. That would be great, Mark. I'd love to do that. Yeah, and yeah, no, I wish you all the success going forward, Ken. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today. Thank you, Mark. I really enjoyed it. And uh, Best of luck to all your your uh, listeners out there who are writers. Just keep at it. Just keep at it. Keep writing. Well, before you go, Ken, would you mind maybe just listing the names of your books? I'm going to share all your information, your website yes. I, I, on on the show. It's just for people that you know just are watching now or listening now, just to give them a rundown of the names of your books, please. The three the three children's books are Theo the Mouse, a Christmas Story. The second one is Tell Me a Story. That's about the children who tell their own bedtime story. And the, the third children's book, I really like this one too, is called A Halloween Warning. And it's about monsters during Halloween. That's their time when they get to go out amongst people. So they go out. But the book is geared toward being safe at Halloween. There's a message for it. But the illustrator in that book is wonderful too so theo the mouse um uh tell me a story and a halloween warning are the three children's books and then in leadership and management it's called caps 101 and it's uh based on a num 19 qualities if you're a manager or leader there's 19 qualities that you need and they're very very quickly described and there's a self-evaluation for each one of those qualities that's built into the book and then uh, finally, is uh, the the book on spiritual essays, uh, and that's also in Amazon. You can can find it under under my name. So that's that's what I've got so far. Sounds amazing. Sounds really good, especially the manager one. Like that's that's very interesting as well for people to check out. It, it really yeah. would be good yeah. for somebody who's yeah. just starting out in leadership. It's a great book to start with. Right. Yeah. No, that's great. Now, thanks many for sharing everything. It's been an absolute pleasure, Ken. I wish you all the success going forward with everything you do. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're more than welcome. Thank you. So thanks everyone for listening to Mark's Motivational Podcast, another uh, author's episode with Ken Moores. So make sure you check out the web, the show notes for all his, his links and his website. So till next time, take care of yourselves and see you again. Take care. Bye-bye.